Now it's time to look at the shaft seal. Remember we talked about we'd have a coupling on here and we're going to connect to a motor. So now we're going to have to remove the coupling hub if we're going to change a shaft seal. And when would we change a shaft seal? When we're leaking re too much oil. Because all, sh all seals will drip some oil. There's a little uh, vi uh, drain line that goes underneath here and it collects in a bottle and probably would drip one or two drops a minute. But if, if we're filling this bottle every day, it's time to change the seal. Or if we're leaking refrigerant. And most of the times the, a leaking refrigerant would happen in the, when the machine is shut off. Because the, the seal area is always full of oil. So the oil is used for cooling and lubrication and, and it helps seal as well. So to change the shaft seal again, we're gonna have to remove all the refrigerant log out, tag out, um, follow all those procedures that we talked about earlier. And we're going to be removing this seal retainer right here. So we've taken the coupling hub off, we've taken the, the keyway off, and so we're going to take these bolts out. I've got them pretty loosened, so I'm not... struggling at all. Which, which you wouldn't really. So again, we're going to take them all out. We could also have to have a little bit of um, a container to collect oil. Because once we remove this, you're going to have some oil coming out. Not a very complicated seal. We have a several different ones uh, for our very high pressure machines. We have a more um, sophisticated um, shaft seal because of the high pressures that we need. But this is our typical seal that we use in um, refrigeration and gas compression. Again, this machine was previously used on ammonia. What's different between an, a gas compression shaft seal and an ammonia shaft seal is the o-rings the rubber so um, you might find um, some seals will have viton other ones have have neoprene so um, ammonia uses neoprene so we've got these threaded areas here where we can push the shaft the plate so we just thread these same bolts in here and it'll push against the housing see and and it'll release it because this is sealed again with an o-ring o-rings will tend to stick a, a bit so we just continue to put this in like this until you can pull it off while you're doing this oil is coming out underneath here see I was able to pull that at that point so we pull this off you see this o-ring here that's the the seal in this area. Here we have a carbon ring. Now this is the area and this area of the seal that we don't touch. So this is replaced with a seal kit. So is this lip seal which can be knocked out from this side. We put, put it on a couple blocks of wood, knock it out with your screwdriver and then knock the inner part out with your screwdriver as well. We can look in here there's a little bit of a lip. We would just push on this just edge right there, not there. This is the, that's the retaining part. That's the edge you want to touch with. So just this little edge right there where my fingernail is. That's what you want to push on to push that seal out. We don't want to touch that with our fingers. This will also come with the seal and I'm going to pull this out and it's going to come out nice but in the field it might not be so easy so I'll pull that out again there's an o-ring in there which will sometimes bind also we have notches on the end what is that for? that's for an anti-rotation there's a, a pin inside here that locks that lines up with that slot that pin is in direct line with this um, keyway. 
So you know, if you look in there, there is a locking, like a anti-rotation pin in there. It's a little bit of a roll pin. That's probably the trickiest part. You want to line that up when you reassemble. Because if you don't, see how I put a, a mark on that with, my, um, with a, a marker? Just for that notch, you can put that on there and then you know where you are. And you line it up and you can push it on. And you can grab it and you can hear, like it's not touching it or it's not allowing it to turn. If you, if you don't have it in the right spot, and just let's say I'll turn this, and I push it, it's still snapped, but it's not in position, and it's turning now. Now if I put this together, I put this back on with it wrong, not in position, you're not going to really notice it. You're going to put these bolts back in, and you're just going to start pushing it on. You're going to shear that pin right off. Now you're in trouble. So this is why I'm telling you, don't get it, stay out of trouble. Because that pin may not be easy to get out. You may have to pull the whole rotor out to do that. So we're going to put it together properly. See how this turned. But that's not how we want it. We want that notch with that pin. If you, if you remember anything, remember that. Check. Now it's in position. That's the parts of the shaft seal. There's a new O-ring. This, this is part comes with a seal. That part comes with a seal. The lip seal comes comes with new O-rings, that's a kit. That's the ceiling face. Inside here we have what we call a baffle plate. And there are, there's four holes, two are threaded and two of them have check valves in them. If I take a, a little pin Those are check valves in there. What they do is they allow oil to go and lubricate that back bearing. Okay? But then the pressure will not come back and push the oil out of the seal chamber when it's off. Okay? So if you have problems with um, multiple shaft seal failures, it could be that this area is losing its oil and the pressure on the off cycle, the pressure is pushing the oil away and allowing the gas vapor to come out through the seal. There's a Teflon ring in there that seals that area so the, the oil is always going through in one direction. So if you do have a problem with multiple shaft seal failures, you may want to check that that baffle, that Teflon ring in there, isn't worn out. You can see there's not a, a gap between the shaft and the Teflon ring. So you may want to uh, check that out. We'll pull it out and I'll, I'll give you a better look at it. Okay, let's remove this baffle plate now. We're going to take this snap ring out. going to use a couple of pieces of threaded rod, small threaded rod, quarter inch. And I'll thread those into there. And we'll just gently bring this out. Now it's a very exact fit. So you just kind of have to wiggle it out of position and out it comes. So now you can see these are the check valves that allow the oil to go from this direction out the back. And you can see feed that roller bearing in the back. You can see that that's our roller bearing. Remember that's the measurement we were reading. 
That was radial. We call that the radial bearing. Okay. Here's the Teflon ring that will seal, provide kind of a seal against the shaft. It's not positive, but it, it will help. It, and it ride, the shaft rides in it. That Teflon ring can be replaced. Okay. That's all there is. So we want to look for that, make sure that ring's not worn out. If you have had, um, you, you want to take a look in there when you're changing the seal. Make sure that's it, it's it's retain it's uh, in full uh, contact. It's not worn. So this goes back in there. Oh, I'll show you the. Um, you can get a better picture of that that pin. That anti-rotation locking pin, kind of in there. It's right there. So we'll slide this back in. It's not, uh, there's no exact, pl exact place where it needs to be. Just back in. Until it gets to the back. It has to sit flat in the back and, t and be able to spin. Now we know it's in position. Take the rods out. Here's the snap ring. Has a bit of a bevel right here. Flat side again to the back. The bevel facing you. So again, we're going to go in there with that. Squeeze this in there. Make sure it's close to where we want it to be. Then we'll loosen it off. What I do then, I just gently take a hammer and a screw screwdriver. So we'll just take a, a screwdriver. We can just tap that into position there. So it snaps into position. There we go. Good to go here. We'll put the lo locating pin again at the top. We have our new parts, our new seal. I usually take a marker and put a, a mark on there where it's lined up so I can see when I assemble it. Put fresh, fresh oil on everything, for clean refrigeration oil. Lubricate the, the O-rings. Feel that how that goes in place. Feel that it's locked. Now we know that it's in place. We put all our new parts in here. Fresh refrigeration oil on it. Clean. Carefully put this over top without allowing the end of the shaft to hit the seal face. Making sure that your seal drain is at the bottom. And we can put our bolts back in.
That's a seal replacement. 